here's a remembrance of what actually happened on the day of October 7th. Let's tune into the video, man. Make sure you guys leave a like button. And one year ago, on October 7th, Hamas launched the biggest ever terror attack on Israel. The Palestinian organization stormed through the security fence separating Gaza and Israel and killed over a thousand people, wounded nearly 7,500, and took at least 250 people hostage. One year later, as people around the world pay tribute to those killed in the attack and stand with those still in captivity, we look back at the darkest day in Israel's history that shook the region and the world. At dawn on October 7, 2023, Israel woke up to a nightmare. The sky, usually quiet in the early morning, exploded with sirens, blaring warnings of an unimaginable assault. Then the rockets came, thousands of them in just minutes. Cities across Israel were under siege. This was no ordinary bombardment. As the rockets rained down, something far worse was happening on the ground. In the chaos, Hamas fighters had breached the heavily guarded Gaza-Israel border. They arrived with precision on motorcycle, in trucks, by sea and even from the sky. In Zderot, a town just one kilometer from Gaza, Hamas fighters roamed the streets, gunning down civilians without hesitation. Then, further along the border, in the kibbutzim that had once been symbols of peace, the horror was even more profound. In Berri, families were dragged from their homes, helpless against the violence that had come to their doorstep. Children, parents, neighbors, none was spared. Suddenly at 6, I heard a siren, explosions. I checked on the internet and I saw there is a terrorist infiltration. You can see in the background their bodies. I went out, I saw loads of bodies of terrorists, civilians, cars shot up, sea of bodies inside stair road, along the road, other places, loads of bodies. It is sad, it is tragic. When you see stuff like this, man, you can't help but say, how could you not think that Israel would have responded to this the way they responded. This was a horrific attack. Horrific. It had so many innocent people, so many innocent young children that lost their lives to these people that invaded, pretty much invaded their 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 homes, their houses. They didn't care if you were a civilian or if you were you know, a doctor, they didn't care who you were. They were they were gunning you down as you were running away from them in the streets of your own of your own neighborhood. I mean, it, it would be morally for me looking from from outside of being in Israel. Morally, I could understand why Israel would retaliate the way they retaliated. Honestly. I'm not surprised they retaliated the way they retaliated because this was, this was really uncalled for this. And this is how it all started, man. It's very unfortunate that we had to deal with it. It's very unfortunate. It's very, honestly, it's very evil that it's very, very, very evil. Honestly, this is very evil. It's sad. It's evil. It's a lot of a lot of evil nonsense going on right now. I can't lie, man.
can't lie. I don't I don't have a I don't have a better way to put this. But I understand why these people retaliated, why they did what they did, and why they are doing what they are doing now to Hezbollah, Hamas. I understand why they did what they did to Gaza. Because they felt like they did they got treated the same way. Honestly. But it's it's a sad situation that's going on over there in the Middle East. Let's let's continue though. We are at war. I don't know when it will all end. And then, in the heart of this chaos, came one of the most shocking massacres of the day. At a music festival near Raim, where thousands had gathered to celebrate life, the joy quickly turned to terror. Rockets fell and the crowd scattered in panic. But there was no escape. Hamas commandos arrived by road and air, hunting down festival goers as they ran through the open fields, and more than 360 were killed. Such cruelty. I don't think there's an animal on the face of the earth or a person who can be so. War between soldiers. But girls? Abusing the bodies of girls, children, families? I can't find him and I don't know what to do. If he's not on the list, I keep following the names on the list all day, everywhere, every time. There's another person who's dead and he's not there. So does that mean we're going to find him? It's impossible that we won't find him. And on the other hand, they send us more videos to see who's been kidnapped, how many, why, something, I don't know. It's scary not knowing anything. As the hours passed, the Israeli military fought desperately to regain control. And shortly after 9 a.m., Defense Minister Yuav Gallant declared, Hamas made a grave mistake this morning. It started a war against the state of Israel. The state of Israel will win this war. And by midday, Israel retaliated, launching airstrikes on Gaza in a show of force, flattening buildings and sending shockwaves through the entire region. What happened to us is complete destruction. We are Al Bawab family, and there were 150 people at this building, including my uncles, my sisters, families of my uncles, my five brothers, whose houses were destroyed. It is not suitable to stay in now. They are residing with our relatives, our friends, and beloved ones. They bombed us suddenly without any warning. We suddenly felt that everything has fallen on us. We were shocked and the people who they pulled out were dead or injured. But thank God my children are martyred. My son Asef and Hassan are missing and Shaima and her children died. See, that's the saddest part about it because now that they retaliated, a bunch of innocent people on the Palestinian side are dying also. Um, you got to blame Hamas for this one. You can't, you cannot blame Israel. You can't, like, from, from the outside looking in, and this is just my perspective. I could be off. Y'all could correct me if I'm wrong. I'd, I'd really like to know y'all thoughts, but from my perspective, you can't blame Hamas. You can't blame Israel for responding in the way they responded. If you kill my brother and you got the audacity to, to do it on a day we're celebrating his birthday, you got to understand there's going to be some consequences for your actions. Whether, it, whether it's up for me or it's up to the law. Regardless of how you feel about it. Now, now, if I took your basketball and you're trying to get your basketball back, then let's play for it. Let's play for it. Let's talk it out. Let's let's do something. Let's do something. In this sense, this is not how that went. It's not it's not even like 
Oh, they, they took something from them, that, which they may have. They could have took land or whatever the case may be, whatever they're fighting over. I heard it's land. I heard it's because of the past. I heard it's because they feel like they have um, the Palestinians in a chokehold, which if they feel that way, they should be able to come together and, and have a conversation and, and actually get some policy down without having to sacrifice y'all lives in a sense. Without having to sacrifice y'all lives, y'all telling me and in innocent people's lives, y'all telling me that y'all couldn't have a sit down conversation at the table, you two powerful leaders, and come to a resolution. Both of y'all cannot be this, this, this far gone. Honestly, I see a lot of Netanyahu. I see a lot of him speaking, especially in the United States. But for the Hamas leaders, the Israeli, uh, the Iranian leaders, they don't want nothing to do with America. They actually want death to America, death to Americans. And it's funny because here in America, you will see people shouting the same thing, the same rhetoric on American soil. You know what that tells me? America is no longer America. America has lost its real identity, its own identity. That's just me. That's just from my perspective. If you have a country that is going to war with another country that, that has already pretty much incorporated that other country's people into its country, now you have two countries in one giant country. When in the in the United States of America's case, you have multiple countries all over the entire world in the United States of America. We try to get along here already. It's it's already hard enough to do it in the United States of America. These people, these people, they don't want to get along. They want death. It's sad, honestly. It's very, very sad. But let's finish this off. As the clock ticked closer to noon, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu addressed the nation by a video. Citizens of Israel, we are at war, not in an operation or in rounds, but at war. This morning, Hamas launched a murderous surprise attack against the state of Israel and its citizens. We have been in this since the early morning hours. The Prime Minister said that Hamas would pay an unprecedented Dented price. He added, We are at war and we will win. The narrative of we will win quickly caught on. And a year later, Prime Minister Netanyahu continues to remain adamant. Day after day, Israel proved to Hamas that what they gave will be returned and without a doubt, it will be a tad harsher. So, as Israel shifts attention more towards southern Lebanon and northern Israel, following nearly one year of war in Gaza, the darkest day in Israel's history proved that even the strongest can fall when least expected. Man, they leveled, they leveled Gaza. I gotta be honest with you, they, they leveled Gaza. Um, and that was out of anger, pure anger. When you're dealing, when you're in this position and you're, you're a leader of amongst women and men and children, how do you respond to an attack so viciously like this? You know, there's no, there's no real good answer for this because honestly, it's all evil. It's, it's all evil. It's all meant to, to, to destroy. It's all meant to distract and kill and destroy and, and burn. It's all meant for that at the end of the day, you know, whether they're doing it for land or money or respect. Um, it's all it's all evil because at the end of the day, 
millions is going to be lost because of this. Millions of people. It's it's super sad, honestly. It really is because this could all be avoided. This could be all avoided. If there were actual leaders that can communicate effectively, um, that can get things done effectively, that can face their opponent or their their adversary and have a conversation with them, although they may, may not disagree. I mean, although they, uh, although they might not agree on everything, but they're still able to have a conversation without it getting violent. It's sad that we don't have leaders that are in this country and in their country and so forth that can't have a, a simple conversation to see what is the exact issue and how can they resolve this issue in a timely fashion. Because if not, let's be honest here. If not, it's going to cause World War Three. Whether we like it or not, whether we prevent it or not, this is what's going to happen. It's, 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 it's amazing that this is this is not covered at the magnitude it should be covered. If if I was a reporter, which I guess in a sense I am, I would want to know what are the leaders saying besides Netanyahu cuz we we see Netanyahu and we see the I, I I've, I've I've talked about the Iranian leader also. We've we've done videos on him. We know how he feels, but why can these two not sit down in a in a room or even have a phone call to get to a conclusion? Because at the end of the day, man, it's not them two that are out here on these 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 floors, these grounds and shooting bullets. It's not them two. That's just the honest truth. They're just the head of it. They're just the they're, they're the voice of all the troops and all the, the innocent civilians. They're the voice of them. And it's unfortunate. It really is. Let me know y'all thoughts about this down in the comments below. I'd really like to know y'all thoughts. Are we heading into World War Three? Are we heading into World War Three? That's my biggest question tonight. Let me know y'all thoughts, man. Hit that subscribe button if y'all are new. Make sure you guys leave a like on y'all way out. It's your boy, D-Guy Sauce, man. Until next time. Peace.